Hello again and welcome to a new video. Today we're looking at this September 2021 on a 71 plate Toyota Hilux 2.8 double cab Invincible X auto gearbox. Now this car's finished in, I think it's called Nebula, Nebula Blue, if I can get that out, which is a metallic color. And uh, the vehicle's covered, I think it's just gone over 20,000 now. We, uh, we've done a few miles since we picked it up. Uh, the whole car has been machine polished. We've added some really nice accessories as we do on a lot of these vehicles now. And uh, we're gonna take you around the vehicle, show you the condition, point out anything on the car, point out what we've done to the car. We've also put a brand new set of Bridgestone jeweler tires on the car as well. So let's start off at the front. Now you'll notice we've got the bonnet guard on the top there. And we've also fitted the Predator Black spoiler bar, which contours the shape of the bumper. I say that because I have seen these fitted upside down. It just looks daft. Um, so this is fitted correctly. And um, the bonnet guard, we, we like these uh, chunkier ones that allow the top of the grill to uh, show still because some of them cover that uh, top section of the grill. Now, if we come down, there are some very insignificant tiny little chips just below that fog light there, which we've touched in. We haven't polished over that, so a lot of that will just come off anyway. It's just a, um, you have to fill them up, let them dry and then polish them afterwards. So while we're down here, we can see all down the side of the vehicle, see how good the panels are, etc. All the trims around the wheel arch. As I say, we've got that sports bar, uh, spoiler bar at the bottom. All the grills, the center here. The badge doubles as the radar for the adaptive cruise control that's on the Invincible X. We come up onto the bonnet. Just going to scan. So what we'll do two crosses of the bonnet. We'll come across like so. I'm just looking off camera to see if I can see any chips, but I can't. And there's nothing back there. I think there might be a little tiny little wincy chip that Dan's touched in on the other side. You can see that lovely shine on the bonnet. I think it was just around here. There was a couple, there we go. Nothing to speak of, tiny been touched in and then they'll get polished when it's hardened up a little bit. The windscreen is worth pointing out. There's no, no nasty marks on the windscreen. And if we look down, let's take a look at the front here. I think again, some very minute, see those little tiny chips just there that have been touched in. They just need to be polished once they harden up. But uh, that's being over critical to be honest with you. It's in lovely condition. You see that shine. All of the side steps are in lovely condition. Just come back out, show you. It really looks nice at the front. The bonnet guard and the spoiler bar together balance the front. If you haven't got the spoiler bar at the bottom, it looks a bit too chunky at the top, but the two together works really well. Let's just come back out. There we go. Just gonna come round to show you the side profile. Now this has got the original Toyota hard top with the, what I call the gull wing openers on the sides, which we'll come to in a minute. On these vehicles, you get keyless entry as well. I've got a little button on the handle to enter, unlock the doors. I'm just gonna show you the wheels, that front panel look. Brand new tires all round, as I say. 
And uh, the last service was done at 19,900 and something miles. Show you all of the panels. And around the filler cap, obviously a good area to check. And see these wheel arches, there's no scratches on them. We've got the wind deflectors as well. And uh, just come down to show you the rest of this panel. So you can see there's no damage. And then again, brand new tires back so moving around to the back rear light no damage there all been machine polished tailgate and on the back here and then there were some very insignificant tiny little chips that were touched in there and uh, quite often you'll see this one was uh, these are made of like aluminium and they bubble up under the paint. So we got the paint shop to paint it for us. We've done them ourselves before, but they've done a much better job, admittedly. So that we've rectified as well. We've got, I think it's 13 pin. Let me just check. Yep, 13 pin ball. We've got a, a cap to go on there as well that we've ordered. Rear parking sensors. Uh, there's also front parking sensors on the vehicle, but we've got the rear camera as well. No damage on the light there. Just going to bring you in and give you a good look at the back. See that there's no damage there. We'll do this side quickly to show you all the panels. There's no scratches. Again, the wheels. And obviously new tyres, the sidestep, no damage, door, the rear here, all around the handles, door edges, nothing around the door handle. All in lovely condition, let's just show you that front wing. Just come back out if I can, without falling over the plant behind me. So there you see it from the side. It's really nice, this blue with the contrasting black. Now, these lids open manually. There is a key to lock them. We've got full set of keys. Now, what we've done with the tailgate We've, if I, if you watch, I can just open that and let go because we fitted a lift and damper kit, which will cost you a couple of hundred pounds plus fitting usually, or just under a couple of hundred pounds plus fitting. And we've got a torsion bar that runs through here. And what that does, I'm no Jeff Capes. Showing my age now by saying that. But uh, one, maybe two fingers would be more comfortable, but it takes the full weight, pretty much, of the tailgate. So much nicer. So you can just really easily lift the tailgate up. Now, we also changed, because we had one in stock, the plastic trim on the back, so to an overrail, because we took an overrail um, set off of another vehicle and we figured we'd use it at some stage and I wanted to clear some space so we've put it on this one so this now goes over the top edge to give you more protection just want to show you up in here to show you how nice condition this is because I've seen a lot of these vehicles and some can be very scruffy but that's all in lovely condition The tray is an original Toyota one, as you can see. All in nice condition. It's not covered in paint or anything like that. Um, it was an electrical company, the, the owner, that had the vehicle before. 
Got a light up there as well. Which I can't, can't reach it. There we go. That does work. And then, just show you the insides of the windows. We've also got sliding windows at the front, which is uh, ideal if you've got a dog and you're gonna use the vehicle um, to put the dog in the back, you can get some airflow through. Now these sides, these all lock, we've got, like I say, we've got a full set of keys. These come up, like I say, like so. And the nice thing is you can then reach right in here to grab stuff that might have slid forward in the back because kneeling on this uh, tray is not the nicest experience on your knees. Now, if you wanted to keep some airflow, and um, what I did notice is that you can turn these handles and they will rest like so, like that. And all you need is a bungee to hold this inwards and you could leave the window slightly out like so if need be. So let's just turn those back. Lock them off, as I say, there's one key that does all of the windows. So we'll lift this up now. And close this down. And you lock the tailgate here and you lock the hardtop office up there. You can get a centralised locking kit so that the tailgate will lock with the rest of the car. Okay, in fact, we'll come round this side, so bear with me. Okay. So, door card. What we're looking for is any damage from seatbelt buckles being jammed in the door, which there is none on this. Clean all the way to the bottom. No nasty dig marks. You're always going to get some tiny little scuff mark somewhere, like insignificant little, get that in focus, there we go, like nothing. We've got the JBL sound system as well. And the speakers up on the top there. We've got cup holders. I was just wondering if Dan has remembered to clean them, <laughs> just in case they need a cleaning. We've got a set of carpet mats in the vehicle you have a manual seat on the passenger side an electric seat on the driver's side perforated leather seats black headlining of course you wouldn't want it in cream would you that's for sure now the top glove box here has got a vent on the side just here so you can run the air conditioning in there to keep it cool it's like a chiller box. And then we've got the locking wheel nut box in there. An adapter for the electrics on the back and the book pack. All in there. And then we've got the media air conditioning. I'll, I'll show you more of that when we come around. All of the gear stick area around here. Um, we gently machine polish this. We've got a very small... Um, mopping head which we use because these always pick up little scratches but we've brought it up like new again as you can see so it's not uh, covered in scratches or anything like that that's the one thing with black gloss it does scratch very easily so I'll just show you these leather seats one more time so you can see there's no damage no damage on the center armrest or the driver's seat. Okay, let's come round to the rear. So, rear door card, again, really nice condition. Nothing really to mention there. Hilux plates on there. These have always got little scratch marks on. It doesn't take long for those to get marked, to be honest with you. And the back of the front seats, you'll notice, really nice and clean. I've got a little hook there for your shopping. 
get that in the light. And then these seats, these lift up. Now this strap will pop her around the headrest post and that can stay up like so. You've got a little cubby hole. We've got the electric, twin electric adapter thing in there as well. So we can put both sides up. This is a 60-40 split. Or we can just put that down like so. Isofix in the back. No marks on the seats. That's just where I've been leaning on it. We've got centre armrest, I think. Yeah. With cup holders. Headrest. We've got some little hooks up here. To put, hang your coat up there as well. So I'm going to put your hat. <laughs> okay, let's come around to the driver rear. Okay, so the door card, again, really nice condition. No damage. And it's probably worth mentioning, just in case you didn't hear the good news, there was a, a court case with Coca-Cola had taken the government to court over um, vans with seats in paying different tax etc anyway I won't bore you the details and then for a week it was announced you know it was announced that pickup trucks would lose their um, status as a commercial vehicle um, you know for business tax and that but very quickly within a week that's all changed they're going to hold it to how it was originally so that's really good news. Benefit in kind, that was what was escaping me. So they still qualify for the commercial benefit in kind, which is great news. Okay, so all nice in there. Driver side. Uh, I think that's just because the door's open actually. Right. Oh no, I've let got the lights on, so if I... There we go. Right, driver's door card. Again, down the edge. Come round. Got to be careful not to cover the microphone this time. Apologies for the last video. I think I buggered up the sound <laughs> by holding my uh, phone with the wrong hand, really. Covering the speakers. Just checking out this seat. Yep, all in really nice condition. Electric, as I say, on this side. And we've got electric folding mirrors as well. There's also a kit that you can have fitted, um, and they're not that expensive, where when you lock the car up with the key, it will fold the mirrors in as well. So there's options there. There's lots of options on these pickup trucks. If there's anything you need, we've got accounts of most uh, of the big companies that uh, supply the stuff. So always give me a call and ask. Okay, so we've got down here, preheater. So when it's cold, press that and on tick over, the revs will come up and help warm the engine up quicker, uh, warm up the cabin. This you have to have on for the front parking sensors. And then this is a button, which you don't really need to use very often, but sometimes to start the uh, regen for the DPF clean. And then you've got fuel opener, bonnet opener. Okay, let me take the key out of my back pocket. I'll jump up into the vehicle. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll shut the door. Now the other thing we did yesterday, let me just, I'm just gonna, oh, the key, let's bring the key over. Did I bring the wrong key into the car? Oh, I'll tell you what I've done. This key, I think needs, the key fob needs a battery, so, Bear with me, I'll bring you back. So, battery's now changed. Same key fob. And there we go. We're up and running. 
Okay, so we'll just wait for that to clear. So what I was gonna mention, we've machine polished the screen in here as well. Not that it was bad or anything like that, but they just get lots of little hairline scratches where people wipe them with a cloth and stuff. And you'll see that it's just like a mirror finish now. It's come up really nice. Okay, let's um, come down through here. The car's had fuel put in it, but it hasn't re-registered on the range yet. Because you can see the fuel gauge, we've got a quarter of a tank. It's just, it needs to be driven down the road. So, with the steering wheel buttons on the right, and also down here, we've got our cruise control. So we can come, turn it on on the outside. Radar ready. Pull down to set. Now by pressing this button here on the far right, that's where we can adjust how far behind we want to follow the car in front for the adaptive cruise control. And the button just inside that is for the lane keeping assist or lane departure let's flip that on there you go now it says your assist active now i'm going to take that off um because a lot of people don't like it turned on now if we move the buttons over to the right you'll see we've got different screens let me just try and keep this still for a second bluetooth radar already uh, no messages in there settings now we've pressed the center button on the steering wheel for enter lane departure awareness we'll press the center button right your assist on if I press it it'll turn it off so your assist if you do not indicate when changing lanes the steering wheel will just pull you like this back into the lane so that's why I've turned it off because uh, by default I'd like I turn them off for customers. They can turn it on if they wish. Now, if we come out of there and go back down, this is basically your um, collision warning and braking. Now we can set below how far we want that radar to pick the car up in front. We come out of there. This is road speed awareness which we've got told on, uh, turned on, told on. And the little symbol at the top there, that will show the speed of the road that we're on. Now it also, when the road speed changes, there's a notification method and you can have that um, visual and audio. So it will like beep. So if you go from a 50 mile an hour zone into a 30, it will beep to warn you and it will show you on there what the speed uh, you should be doing. So quite handy for some people, I'm sure. Come out of there. And this is, I think it's a dynamic radar cruise control. That's what I'm gonna call it anyway. So that's uh, is where you can turn that on and off there as well. I come out of there. Okay. On this side of the steering wheel, we've got the buttons for stereo, volume, telephone, etc. We've got auto lights over here, your wipers. Now, hazards are up on the top there. Now, this display is quite bright at the moment. If we go into setup, it's flickering quite a lot at the moment. If we scan down, we can change this. There we go. You can have red if you wish, but I think the black and blue is quite nice. Um, now, using the USB port down there, the vehicle does have, or the, the media does have, Android and Apple CarPlay. So you can bring the map from your Google Maps up on here, your music, etc., which is quite nice. Um, the, the map on here is okay, but it's nothing to write home about, is it? It's quite simple. Um, I think a lot of people like using Waze and Google Maps or Maps. So you'll be able to do that. Um, we've got uh, audio with DAB. You go to Source. And um, you've got Miracast as well. Never used it, so not familiar with that. Um, Favourite stations, etc. Um, setup. Yeah, 
there's not too much in here. I think you can adjust uh, measurements, etc., keyboard sensitivity, things like that. And then down here, we've got the climate control. So volume is on the left there. And turn the aircon on or off. We'll turn it off because it'll make a puddle on the floor. Temperature this side, auto. Or we've got options here. Recirculate. Heated screen at the bottom of the screen to defrost your wiper blades, mirrors. And then down here we've got two US, uh, sorry, two 12 volt um, charging ports. You can turn the stop start off here. This is where the heated seats are, left and right. This is a hill descent option, uh, traction control. And this is a rear diff lock. You only want to use that. For one, you need to be in low four, but you would own, that will lock the rear diff. That's for when you're properly stuck. So don't try driving around. In fact, you shouldn't really drive around on the roads in four wheel drive because the diffs can get very hot. You know, it's only for when you're on slippery surfaces um, and then just engage it. You can engage it while you're in motion and just then flip it off. And to get into low four, you have to push this. In fact, if you go to four, then you have to push it to go into low four. And you'll quite often see this flashing on the top up here and it won't stop flashing till you've moved forward and it's engaged because it's a mechanical um, part that has to engage. Now, if we turn that off and go back to there, you'll see it will still flash. So if this happens to you, don't panic. If I, if I put it in gear, I don't know if I've got enough room to move. There we go. You see that as soon as I move forward, it disengaged. Now, while we've got it in reverse, I'll just show you that we've got reverse camera as well. Um, is there any options on there? Don't think there is on this one. But uh, you can see the tow bar down here. You can see all of the back bumper and you can see this line here to line you up with the tow bar. And then when you move the steering, is that gonna move? No, it's not, not on this display. I think on the later ones it does. So we'll come out of there. Okay, we've done all down there. Ah, oh, we've also got uh, different drive modes. We've got normal, we've got eco, which it's in now. So if I press eco, you'll see that come on. And then you've got power. You'll be surprised when you use that power button. It's like the vehicle just wants to keep surging forward and keep going and going. We've also, on this one, it's got fitted, let me see if I can move this camera around, the Wi-Fi, which is an optional extra. And then we've got a, a plug just here, which you can't see. I think there's a plug there, is there? Yes, the lid was up. 100 watt, two pin plug. Push that down. Yeah, so you can, the vehicle's got its own Wi-Fi. We'll pop that down. Right, I'm going to attempt to get out now and pull the bonnet. We will turn the engine off quickly. So I'll pull the bonnet. Go and check out the engine bay. See if I can do this with one hand. I can't remember where the bonnet. Right, there we go. Okay, bear with me. Oh, they are heavy. Probably one of the heaviest bonnets I've, I know of. Right, there we go. I found it, it was right in the middle. I should have known, but I was lifting it and it pulls to the side, like so. Okay. Engine bay, four cylinder, Turbo, 208 PS, I think it's about 204 brake horsepower. Toyota reliability is second to none. These vehicles 
have a 10-year warranty, 100,000 miles. So whichever comes first, the 100,000 miles or the 10 years. Now, after... Now, I can't remember if this one is on a three-year warranty or a five-year, and then they were extendable. So each time, after that period, each time you went into Toyota and had a Toyota service, they would extend the warranty by another year, year after year, up to 10,000 miles or 100,000, sorry, 10 years or 100,000 miles. I would recommend taking the car into Toyota for its services. They're every 10,000 miles, 12 months, they're not expensive Toyota, they're very fair of their prices and um, you know it's being looked after properly. The guys there, they know exactly what they're doing, what to look for and um, Toyota are very much customer orientated, they look after their customers so fantastic product really, that's why we love selling them. You know the backup that they give is really good. So all nice and clean under there. The way to close these bonnets, just bring them down and then just let them go and they will fall down nicely. What you don't want to do is bring it down gently and then try pushing on the top because you're going to end up either cracking that bonnet guard or uh, denting the bonnet. Well, there we have it. Our Toyota 2.8 Auto uh, blah, Invincible X double cab with the... Toyota hardtop and all the accessories that we spoke about. If you've got any questions, please give me a call. Um, the vehicle's all ready to go now. We've got some finance options. Obviously, you don't need to take out an extended warranty. Just service it with Toyota and they will look after you. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Till the next time. Bye.